Good morning. <clears throat> Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's Kelly here, Flippin' Mama. And I am up early today. Early, early, early today. to zen my head today, you guys. Mm. Mm. No, this isn't normal for me. It actually feels kind of good. <laughs> ah. So, what's my headline, you ask? Good morning. Good morning. How are you guys? Hi, Alice. How are you, honey? How are you doing today? Look what I found, Alice. Ooh. It isn't worth anything, but how cool. Where's the date? Where's the date? Oh. Nineteen thirty-five. Now, why can't I see it in the camera? Oh, because series is on it too. That's why. Right here, series. Nineteen thirty-five. E. Or is it nineteen thirty-two? No, nineteen thirty-five. That's why I couldn't read it because it had series and it was backwards. It. I'm not sure if it's considered a silver certificate or not. I haven't researched it. But uh, I pulled up 1935 $1 bill and it said it was worth $1.50. <laughs> um, but at least it's worth a dollar, right? Yeah, I, I don't know. I know that the website that I looked at, you guys, if it, if it had Hawaii written right here, down this section right here, if it said Hawaii, then it's worth about $25. But this is where I found it. Okay, I, um, let me get this out of my face. So I bought from Fashion Reclaim. A whole bunch of lots. <clears throat> I got a bunch of scarves and a couple of lots where she would do the purse and a scarf and some jewelry and things like that, you know, all together. And this was the purse. I got three purses. No, two purses from her. This was the purse. Where's the other one? The other one's just like this, but it's gold. Probably under this, but yeah, this one, I got this one and this one, and in this one, when you, when you open it up, see the little compartment in here, there's a mirror, and the mirror is still wrapped inside the tissue paper, right? It's like a little envelope, right? See, it's, 
It's a little envelope. And it's sort of ripped because, you know, it's from the 30s. But tucked back in here was, and it was tucked really tight. I mean, it was folded really small. In fact, these are the actual fold lines. It was folded like this size. And it was folded really, really tight. Um, and when I opened this and I took the mirror out to see what, you know, kind of shape the mirror was in, the dollar bill fell out. And I was like, oh, let's take a look. And I was like, oh, 1935, that's cool. I mean, immediately you can tell it's just a different looking bill. Because, I mean, it's got the blue writing on it. It just looks different. You know it's old. Now, it's not old enough to be worth anything. But how cool is that? That is really, really cool. I think I'm going to tuck it away with some $2 bills. I tend to collect $2 bills and um, tuck it away with some $2 bills and save it for my granddaughter. Because when she's a teenager, there's probably not going to be paper money. You know, 10 years from now, we may not even have paper money. I hope so. Today is actually, when I was live night before last, at midnight when I looked at my time, um, and I sang happy birthday to my daughter, it was actually, yeah, it was actually 414. It had just turned April 14th. And um, her birthday's the 15th, so her birthday's actually today. So... We'll see if I hear anything from her. I, I won't. I probably won't. But hello, Miss Autumn Grace. Yeah, I probably won't hear from her, but you never know. Um, I'm going to email her and see if I can take her out for supper tonight. So we'll see. We'll see if she allows me to. It would be nice if she lets me take her shopping. I will take her and Bella out for supper and take them both and buy them both a birthday present. Since we missed Belle's birthday in October and Easter, we missed Easter with her last year and her birthday and Christmas. Uh, and now Paige's birthday and Easter coming up Sunday. Um, I don't know. Maybe she'll let me take them out. You're on hold for YouTube right now. Bless your heart, Autumn. Let me know what they say. And I'll, I'll always call you Autumn, not your real name. <laughs> Just because that's how I first knew you. But I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. But I got it wrapped up. And I'll put it in my, my bell box. Because I've got a bell box of special things that were like her favorite toys and um, her Hot Wheels that I bought her that, you know, we were playing Hot Wheels and then she would automatically say, you know, she was like three and she would say eight and I go, well, honey, and she'd go eight and I go, are you hungry? And she goes, no, not, not eight. And she'd pick up the car and there was an eight on the car. And I was like, oh. Okay, you know your numbers, you know, and so I'm like, let's try letters. And um, she knew a couple of the other numbers that were on the car. And 
on, you know, different cars. And then well, let's try some letters. And she knew about 10 letters. And, you know, it was just from, I wasn't teaching her numbers and letters at that time. I mean, I would say things, you know, but you never know if they're going to pick them up. But we used to have a lot of educational apps that she would play on the tablet and stuff like that. And my mom would have her do. And so she was learning from, from there. Because nowadays, when you have a child in kindergarten, they have spelling tests in kindergarten. It's, it's no longer where you have to know your colors and you have to know your shapes to make it into kindergarten. No. Hi, Mary. No, it, it isn't like that at all. It's all about spelling tests and a four and five letter words and history and you know grammar in, in kindergarten and it just completely amazed me and I just did not think I mean I knew they pushed kids harder in school now but never did I think that in kindergarten kids would be doing vocab and in spelling tests and stuff and actually being able to do it, you know? Oh, I'm sorry, Alice. Yeah, I, I just, you know, whenever I get a $2 bill or come across a $2 bill, I always save it. And way back when, when I used to work in retail, whenever I would get $2 bills, I'd always buy them. Because I don't even think they make $2 bills anymore. Mary, did you get your ring? Your double B ring? Have you got it yet? You should have had it by now. What, honey? Yes, I know you're hungry, but I'm not going to feed you yet. You're going to have to wait till 2 o'clock. Oh, you love it? It fits okay? Did you kiss it? Could you read my note with my messy handwriting? <laughs> ow. Ow, you're hurting me. Get down. Thank you. Get down. Well, I'm glad you like it. Yay! Ow. The strangest things happen when I'm live. Like things fall. I snap a rubber band. But I always have to be playing with something with my hands. I always got to be doing something. What's everybody doing right now except for Miss Autumn? We know what she's doing. Oh, maybe I should quit playing with rubber bands. I have too many open sores on my hands. <clears throat> I could put my tools away. Back when, I told you guys the story. Back when uh, you don't kiss stuff, but your note and cute earrings were wonderful. <laughs> well, good. I'm glad. Hi, Dad. When I got super glue all over my hands, and I thought I would just sand it off. And I sanded the skin off of my fingers. Those, those areas are finally starting to heal. So those areas are finally starting to heal. So I'm trying to give my, my fingers a, a couple of days without, without rings. But I don't have anything on these fingers. Um, but yeah, I got super glue all over my fingers. Well, then you might want to wash it because I kissed it. Remember at the auction, you're like, no, mama, it's your ring. And I was like, no, I want you to have it. And I 
I kissed it. So it's got my germs and DNA on it. That could be a, a happy thing for you or a bad thing for you. I haven't been sick, so... I have my window open, you guys, so I'm sorry for any noise that you hear or any hot rods or motorcycles. We have a lot of hot rods and motorcycles in this neighborhood, and I live on a busy road. However, it is a beautiful day in Kalamazoo, Michigan, although it snowed last night about, I looked outside about well, let's see, I got off the phone with Heather, Dwayne's wife, Heather, Mothership Products. I got off the phone with her while I'm more at 1 a.m. And then Dwayne wanted me to call him, so I, I called him. And I ended up talking to Heather. I talked to Dwayne for maybe 30 seconds. And then I talked to Heather until 3.30 in the morning. And and then I was up for a little bit until maybe five, and then I went to bed. And then my mom called me at eleven. What you doing? Thought I'd stop over for coffee. Okay, mom, come on over. <laughs> and now thirty seconds later, boom, 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 boom. I didn't even get a chance to get up and use the bathroom or anything. She must have been like at the end of my driveway. And thought she'd call and make sure I was up before she, uh, before she came to knock on my door. Because I hate that when I'm sleeping and somebody's pounded on the door and stuff. I don't like that. It scares me. So that was nice for her to call first. Hi, Leticia. Well, thank you. It isn't worth anything, but how cool, right? How cool. I'll show you because you weren't here, but. This is the purse it came out of. I got this one from her, that auction, and this one from her. And when I opened it up to look in it, there's a mirror in there. And then when I took the mirror out, it was still wrapped in the tissue paper envelope. And I, I took the mirror out to see what kind of condition it was in. And the dollar bill fell out. It was all folded up really, really, really tight. And, um, in fact, you know, I was thinking that this was an adhesive or something on the back. But look, that's the size of the dollar bill. So that dollar bill had to have been folded up in that purse. Well, obviously, since the 30s. Because that is what the dollar bill looked like. It's got the creases and everything. And that is the exact size the dollar bill was when it when it fell out. It was really tightly folded, like it had. But it was folded when it was put in there, and then it was never touched or forgotten about. Like it was somebody's mad money, you know. That was really cool. That was really cool, and that came in like a twenty-five pound box. Uh, and I got a huge box. It was a huge box. The mail lady had trouble carrying it. I don't know if it says that. Let me look. I've got it all wrapped up for my granddaughter. Let me look. Now what did I do with it? Where did I put it, you guys? You, you saw me do something with it. What did I do with it? Oh, guys. I put it over here, didn't I? When I put it in the plastic, I put it over here. <laughs> oh, yeah. This is my life. I tucked it away. Where did I put it? I thought I put it 
it right here. No, because I don't have one on. <laughs> I have a really, um, I've got a LuLaRoe maxi skirt on. And it's really tight in the waist. And so I just have that pulled up over here so it keeps the girls from moving around. I don't have to worry about it this way since I had a breast reduction. Had eight pounds taken off, but I got to worry about them going like this. <laughs> but I do do that, Dad. I do stick stuff in my woman wallet all the time. And then I'll go and I'll rip my bra off at the end of the night and things go flying out of it. And then my husband just looks at me, smiles and shakes his head. And he'll be like, here's your driver's license. He'll toss it across the bed. Or here's your credit card or debit card. Here's some money. Yeah. I'll forget I got stuff in there and rip my bra off and everything goes flying. I don't know what I did with it. Oh, did I put it up here? I should put it in my God jar. I don't know what I did with it, you guys. Oh, well, maybe somebody will find it in 2030. And they'll be like, oh, look, I found this dollar bill wrapped up really tight in this little plastic bag. I wonder who did that. Hit flipping, Mama. And it's documented. I don't know what I did with it, but I'll tell you this. I smell french fries through this window, and it's making me want french fries, and I know that is not fair. That is not fair. It's making me nauseous, actually. Guys, I don't know what I did with it. I honestly don't know what I did with it. I stuck it over here somewhere. I don't know. I'll find it. I'll find it eventually. I know. I thought, well, I'll put it right here because I won't forget that I put it there. And I already forgot. It's what menopause does, ladies. And autoimmune diseases. Look what you have to look forward to. told you a loud car. Sorry. It's going to bother me until I find it. Now I know I didn't pick stuff up and bury it. I'm just hoping that I didn't tuck it in this drawer. Let's just hope I didn't tuck it inside this drawer. Because this is all sorted and tested jewelry. Here's another ring I got from the Salvation Army with three stones across it. And it's testing as genuine gem gemstone, but it's clear. And it's, it's testing multiple on my my tester so I have to really test it again you guys I don't know I wish I had like a wide camera and I could go back and look and see where I stuck it I probably could so I'm not going to worry about it I'll look later It was sitting right here. It was under my debit card. So apparently, I thought it would be safe under my debit card. Yeah, Mary, it isn't worth anything but really cool. I'm more for the nostalgia and 
all of that stuff. Actually, this shirt is a Lulu Road too that I thrifted. Thrifted both pieces. Ah, she was a tissue factory at the end of the day. She stored tissues like a squirrel stores acorns. That is funny. You know, anytime that we go to a wedding or um, to a funeral or anything like that, my husband always takes a couple of men's handkerchiefs with him. Always for me. He always does it for me every single time. He never needs it, but he always takes one for me. That's one of the, the things. Good morning, Deb. That's one of the things that, you know, I take for granted when it comes to my husband. You know, the little things like, um, you know, I, I, I kneeled next to his chair when he was watching TV and asked him to pause the TV. Asking him to pause the TV is asking a lot. And I said, I gave him a kiss and I said, you know, I just want to tell you. He goes, what? He thought I was going to give him bad news or something. I said, I, I just want to tell you thank you for all of the wonderful things that you do for me that I take for granted. And think, oh, well, that was nice of him to do. And then I, I forget to thank you later or whatever. And he goes, you're welcome. And I said, you know, you always put a snow scraper and uh, windshield wiper fluid and, and that kind of stuff in my car because I like to have windshield wiper fluid a lot. I use a lot because I like clean the clean windows in the car. It bothers me. And um, so we always make sure that, that I have those in my car for winter. And he always makes sure that my boots are out. He always gets my boots out for me. And, you know, just little things like that. You know, he always takes out the bathroom garbage and, you know, the kitchen garbage. And, you know, things like that. Things that he just always does that... I don't even think about, you know, like time change. He always does the clocks on daylight savings time. Always. It's just something he's always done. And I know I never have to worry about it because I know he's going to do it. And so I was naming off this great big long list of things because I had noticed several things that day of things that he always does. And, you know, I said, I just want you to know that I really appreciate that. And I know I take those things for granted, but today I was thinking of them and I, didn't, I wanted you to know I wasn't taking them for granted and that I really appreciate you doing those things. And I love you very much. And I gave him a kiss and he just was like, thank you. Thank you so much. And then in, in true mama fashion, you know, he smiled and I smiled back and I said, how about you tell me all the great things I do for you that you take for granted. It had a big smile on my face, and he just busted out laughing, gave me a kiss, and I got up and left. I, I'll, I'll ask him for, like, what are five reasons that you love me? And he will not play that game. He just won't do it. What are what are the five five greatest things you like about me? Or what are the? But if I say, what are the five things you hate about me? Boy, he jumps on that like nobody's business. But, yeah. So I, I try and I try and and do those things for him now because he he does a lot of really nice things that I just take for granted, you know. And it's easy to do, you know, like scrubbing showers and scrubbing the toilets and and um, steam mopping the floors, vacuuming the stairs, um, taking care of the dogs, doing the. Um, always doing the medical stuff for the dogs. They do a lot of medical stuff for our dogs and the, uh, you know, the flea, the, the taking care of the animals and stuff like that. I always do those things. And, you know, they, he, you know, like he never says, Oh, I saw you clean the bathroom today. Thanks. He doesn't notice that. He just notices it's not dirty. <laughs> you know what I mean? And there's just so many things like that, that they happen in relationships, especially, you know, 34 year relationships that, I mean, that's not what this, this 
you know, chat was supposed to be about, but it just popped in my head. So I saw my God jar and I'm like, you know, thinking about putting all the things I'm grateful for in the God jar. And that popped into my head. So out my mouth it came. Because if it pops in my head, it comes out my mouth. You know that's how I am. <laughs> yeah, I put things in such a safe place I can't find them. Let me see. What was I supposed to look for, Mary? Hi, Kathy. Silver certificate or gold certificate. No, it doesn't. Oh, it says silver certificate. It says silver certificate right on it. Right on the top. Silver certificate. I know if it says Hawaii down here, across the, the side here, it's worth about $25. So it says silver certificate. Um... In silver, payable to the bearer on demand. One dollar in silver, payable to the bearer on demand. Yeah, payable to the bearer in silver on the bottom. Yeah, it says that. So I think it's worth a dollar fifty. You need one of these, or you need one of my husband. True gentlemen are hard to come by in today's world. Yes, they are. And although my husband is a true gentleman, he can also be a true jerk sometimes. But who can't be? Sometimes I'm a true jerk too. So, but he does a lot of very nice things for me. So I am not complaining. I'm not complaining right now anyway, <laughs> but yeah, this isn't in a lot, this isn't in very good condition. I mean, it's, you know, it was folded up tight. It's creased. It's folded. I've increased the creases because I have to play with stuff with my hands. So I'm like really creasing it up good. So I'm not. I'm not adding to its value by any means. Um, it's like the fourth hot rod that has gone past the house. Where I live, there's a lot of people that put money into their cars and their motorcycles and stuff like that. So, hot rods. Oh, that's cool, Kathy. You got a $20. Your dad got a $20 gold certificate. Is that... So it was a $20 bill that said gold certificate on it? I'm telling you what. I watched this video one time. Where am I putting this? Where am I putting the dollar? You will be my witnesses. Here's my dollar. Here is the scotch tape. Paying attention? Here's my monitor. It's taped on top of my monitor. Where is it? Okay. So, it's taped on top of my monitor. So... When I can't find it, guys, there it is right there, okay? That's my I love you, Mama. Love you, Mama. It was on something somebody sent me. So I keep all my little love notes that people send me. And most of them are on my wall, but that one I tape right on my monitor. So it's the first thing I see and the last thing I see. Hi, kid. I love you too, kid.
Hello and good morning, Todd. I just put my dollar away or I would show you, but it's really cool. I folded it up. I've already lost it once today during this 35 minute broadcast. I love you too, Mary. And I've taped it to my monitor and I've shown everyone I've taped it to my monitor. So the next time I can't find it, you guys know it's right here taped to my monitor. So you can remind me. How's the thousand club, Todd? You're at what, 1100 now? That's awesome. You know, I downloaded an app that um, lets me stream and it goes right to my YouTube so I can stream under a thousand but it's and I can see the chat and everything but it doesn't let me put a title in it, it just says live um, broadcast from hip flip and mama or something like that mm. If the band got a hold of that bill, it would probably be destroyed. So you saved it. Who's the band? If the band got a hold of it. Oh, the bank. You think they would have destroyed it? Oh, I don't. I don't know if they would have destroyed it or not. Do they do that? So many I love you mamas in the chat. I love you guys too so much. That's awesome, Todd. I'm so proud of you. You worked so hard. You worked so hard. I'm really, really, really proud of you. I think I'm still trying to, to bounce back from that little marathon. <laughs> <laughs> and then I had another marathon the other night because um, there was a really bad storm. I told you guys it was Florida, but it was actually Alabama. Deb is in Alabama, which ironically is where my brother-in-law is right now on vacation, is in Alabama. He went down to meet his new grandchild. So... Hmm. I love you too, Leticia. Your stuff's going out today, so watch for that. I didn't know that, Mary, that all worn and old and worn bills get thrown away. I've got, Tom and I have some really old bills um, in our lockbox. You know, our fireproof, floodproof, you know, those lockboxes that weigh like, 50 pounds. We've got some old money in there. We have quite a bit of Okinawan money because they don't even make Okinawan money anymore. It's all um, Japanese money now because when Okinawa took ownership of, or excuse me, when Japan took ownership of Okinawa, it all went uh, to Japan money. So there is no more Okinawan money. I don't believe. So, because Okinawa used to be its own country. It used to be a separate country from Japan. So, that's why I say my husband is Okinawan. Because he's not Japanese. They were two separate countries, which they're now, they're now one. Okinawa is part of Japan. But, um, well, kid, I'm glad that you're glad that I'm alive. Or that I'm live. <laughs> I'm really glad I'm alive, too. <laughs> uh, you guys, someday I'll give you a tour of my house. 1438, Todd. Um, when are you going live, Todd? Did you already go live? You didn't already go live. Are you waiting for me to get off so you can go live? Because I'll just go ahead and get off. Well, Mary, I'm glad that you're glad that I'm alive. 
Well, thank you, kid. I'm glad you're glad I'm alive. Oh, I bet you had as a bartender? Heck yeah. People get all sloshed up and throw all their valuable coins up there. Silver dollars, quarters, dimes, a 14 karat diamond and golden necklace. You had to put that in the lost and found, didn't you? I don't understand what us this 14. Oh, one, four, three, eight. Um, you're going at one. So in 25 minutes, you're going live. You're an hour behind me or two hours. Hi, picky chick. What's up, baby? Barb, I have to watch your, um, your last video. I'm getting caught up on my videos. You guys, um, your $25 jewelry jar haul. When I, when I have my, my bedtime, not tonight bedtime, but when I, cause my husband's calling me to make sure I take breaks and stuff like that. So when I have my break time or whatever, I lay down for like an hour. Um, I'm going to watch it. So I can't wait. I've, I've wanted to watch it. And I thought, no, I can't, I can't. Cause then I'll get too wrapped up in it and I'll watch other jewelry videos and I'm no longer buying any jewelry. I'm no longer buying any jewelry. Oh, yeah, when I was in bed with the puppy and I was looking all beautiful. Yeah. Oh, Todd's going to be Kimberly's guest. Oh, nice. Oh, Kim will be so happy I caught one of her Monday lives because I'm usually sleeping. She's like, Kelly, you know I go live on Mondays. And I'm like, yeah, but I'm usually sleeping. <laughs> I'm always sleeping. I don't get up until, you know, late this, all this week. I haven't like gotten up until four or five o'clock. So it's a miracle I'm up. Because I was on the phone with Heather, Dwayne's wife, Heather of Mothership Products. I was on the phone with her until 3.30. I was talking to Anna Mora until like one. And then I talked to Heather until 3.30. And then I was up for another hour and a half, so I didn't even go to bed till I think, 5 or 6. So it's a miracle I got up at 11 when my mom called. 20 minutes for Kimmy. Okay. Well, I'm definitely going to watch that. Well, I'm glad you got to, you got to catch one, Barb. Um... I basically had a little marathon live. I think it was five or six hours the night before, not last night, the night before last, because while I was doing my live um, in Alabama, they were having tornadoes and Deb, Deb's treasures, who's in the chat right now, she was getting hit really hard with storms and everything. And I didn't want her to be alone. And so myself and, you know, a bunch of people in the chat and everything were praying for her. And we stayed live so that, you know, she wasn't alone. You know, she had a line of communication. So we were live for a long time. And then um, she called me and said she had to turn her phone off or the volume off on her phone. And so I said, okay, call me when... You know, everything's okay. And then I'll do a live and let everybody know that you're okay. And then um, I went to sleep. Well, a little bit after that, I went to sleep. And then she called me in the morning and said, okay, I'm, I'm okay. Everything's okay. And I was like, all right, honey. You know, I'm happy. I love you. And um, after we got done talking, I went live from bed. <laughs> um, on my tablet well on my phone first and then my phone died because I forgot to plug them in and then I went live on my tablet and my tablet died so then I jumped back on my phone which had charged for a little bit oh lord so yeah hot mess I am but yeah so I promised everybody I'd let them know so I went live from my bed with my hair looking all a mess and since the dogs sleep with me and the cat, they were there, so. 
What happened, you guys, that I scared Scrappy? And he came running up to my face and was licking me. What happened? Did I holler or sneeze or what happened? That, I remember when I scared Scrappy. What did I do? What happened that I scared him? Oh, yeah. When the pup's eyeball pot. Yeah, Scrappy. Yeah. I had to actually vacuum my bed after that live. Because Dwayne was like hitting me up. And I was like, no, I got to vacuum my bed. <laughs> I'll talk to you later because I got to vacuum my bed. And I actually got the um, handheld vac that I had just bought. It's a corded vac specifically to vacuum my stairs with because my cat hangs out on the stairs a lot, the basement stairs. And they're always so full of white, thick white cat hair. And um, this handheld vacuum has got a great big head on it. Um it's like this big around and it goes down about this deep and it's all purple rubber with the little knobs. And then, you know, it's glued onto the base so you can really get in and get the pet hair. It vacuumed my bed perfectly. I was like, oh, I'm going to vacuum myself every time I, I walk out of the house. Oh, that's right. And you're right. Yeah, that's right. Oh, I'm sorry, Barbie. What did you lose him from? Did you have to put him to sleep? And what kind of dog was it? And what kind of dog do you still have? The two that you have. I did show it already, Dab Kitty. So when the live the live's going to be over in a little bit cuz Todd's going to be live on Kimmy's channel. So go back and I've showed it a few times. Um, but I've already got it wrapped up in my play. I remembered where it was. Did you guys see that? Did you guys see that? I looked right at my monitor. I looked right at my monitor and remembered. Because the first time I wrapped it up, I lost, <coughs> lost it and then I couldn't find it. And it was right here in front of me on the table. What happened, Dab Kitty? I'm so sorry, Barbie. Yeah, I am um, a white schnoodle. Wow. So he was a schnauzer and a poodle. Well, you know, schnauzers are relatively intelligent. I mean, they're not like high on the list of intelligent. But, you know, poodles, standard poodles, we're not talking mini poodles, but standard poodles are the smartest dog there is, hands down. The smartest dog, poodle. Yeah, so smart. They are. They're smarter than German Shepherds. Um, the number two most intelligent dog breed is definitely not the lab. They're like 84. But, and I think the pug is 85, but um, the second, what, what guys put in the chat, what do you think the second smartest dog breed is? The second smartest dog breed is. Yeah, they do have a great disposition. Was he a, was he a, if he was a schnauzer, I'm guessing he was a standard poodle, right? The larger poodle, not the mini poodle. Mary, you think the lab is the second smartest dog? No, they're like 26, 49, something like that. Labs are not intelligent. Well, they can be. Don't get me wrong. Labs can be very intelligent. Um, but they're more loyal and, and doofy, full of love dogs. Oh, I'm sorry. Man, Nicole, how old is your daughter? Yeah, I knew it had to be a standard poodle barb because the mini poodles aren't, aren't as smart. Nope, not the German Shepherd. 
But German Shepherd's number three. German Shepherd's the number three smartest dog. You know what I call labs? I, my brothers have all had labs their whole life. They, they've had labs. and um, Or golden retrievers. and Or beagles. Beagles are our family dog. I grew up with beagles in a border collie mix. But um, I dropped a hint there. She's eight. Oh, bless her heart. A type of collie, Barb? Yes, border collie. You are correct. Ding, 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 ding. Poodle is the number one smartest dog breed in the world. Well, at least the United States, but I think the world. Hi, Derek. Woo, woo. Um, the second smartest dog breed is the Australian Shepherd. And if you've ever owned an Australian Shepherd, I have owned an Australian Shepherd. You know how smart they are. No, Lassie is a standard collie. Lassie's a collie. See, border collies are herding dogs. They're like the black and white herding dogs. They're not, there's, there's three general colors for a border collie, and they're tricolored. But most of the coloring is black and white. Like if you pull up border collie in, in you know, Google, it's going to be a black and white dog. And they're the ones that you see, you know, crouching close to the ground and herding a lot. Um, they're used to herd sheep mostly and livestock and things like that. Um, not so much. They're not protection dogs, but they're they're herders and they're very high energy and they're very high maintenance dog. Not just the grooming because they're very you know thick hair with an undercoat and long you know. Um, but then there's also tricolor. There's a couple different variations of tricolor. Hi, Lady Freebird. How you doing, baby? St. Bernard, Mama. They're very smart. Yes, yeah, St. Bernards are smart, but they're not in the top 10. They're not in the top 10, but they are very smart. And St. Bernards are very calm and docile, but they have a really hard work ethic, St. Bernards do. And they are very good watchdogs, excellent watchdogs. They're good guard dogs. Yep, they're rescue dogs. Um, and it is true that back where um, St. Bernard's came from and from the Alps and everything, they would actually carry the wooden barrels on their collar under their neck because they were used in, in a lot of rescue scenarios and whatnot. Um avalanches and things of that nature so that when the animal found the person it was looking for it would have supplies and and things like that in that in that wooden crate for that person until you know people could actually get to that location so that is i mean that's not a myth they did actually you know wear those things under their neck Hi, Melissa. By the way, hi, Mama Kelly. Hi. Bye, picky chick. I love you, baby. I'll be checking you out later. Okay, so what's the number four? It's been a long time since I've researched it. Do I have my phone here? I don't think I do. I might have to actually use the Googles. I might have to use the Googles. Bye, Barbie. Love you, baby. I wish I could go to Barbie's house. I wish I could go to Barbie's house and just sit and visit with her. She's my kind of gal. I just love her. We would be great friends. And she's got that damn cute hair. I just love it. 
Okay. Now my curiosity is peaked. It's peaked, I say. I got to get off here, though, in 10 minutes because I don't want to step on Tati. I want to watch Kimmy. Okay. Top 10 smartest dog breeds in America. Oh, pardon me. Apparently, according to Good Housekeeping, the Border Collie is number one, and the Poodle is number two, and the German Shepherd is number three, followed by the Golden Retriever. I question that a little bit. What? The Golden Retriever, the Doberman Pinscher, the Shetland Sheepdog, the Labrador Retriever at seven, and it ate the Papillon. That's really shocking. I never considered a Papillon to be an intelligent dog. In fact, I never really considered a smaller breed dog to be that intelligent. Because usually smaller breed dogs are companion. Unless it's a rat terrier or something like that. You know, that was bred to, you know, dig under the ground and go after vermin. Things like that. Like a Corgi. That's kind of where their, their history came from. That's why they have the little short legs. American Bulldogs can be very smart, but they're very high strung, too. Oh, you're going for coffee right now? What state are you in, Barb? Yorkies, Yorkies are very finicky. They're very finicky. And they're yippers. I don't consider Yorkies to be intelligent at all. But they're, they're adorable. Adorable dogs. Let's see what this one says. Nope, that's the same list. Oh, Caesar Milan. Let's see what Caesar says. I drink coffee all day, too. And have Carmel Baileys with it. That's pretty cool. Hi, Destiny. I'm only going to be on here for another minute or so, honey, because I'm going to watch Toddy over on Kim's. But, okay, so let's see what, what Caesar says. He says Border Collie, too. I thought it was the other way around. Did, did Barbie say where she lived? She invited me for coffee, but she didn't tell me what state she lived in. So I wasn't sure how far I had to drive. She must have already been gone. Yeah, Todd's going to be on Kimmy's channel live in like eight minutes. So let's go through this list really quick. Border Collie. Border Collie is energetic, affectionate, and of course smart. Border Collie is a true working dog, excelling in sheep herding, athleticism, agility, and cuddling. They're also known for their herding eye and intense gaze used to stare down and hurt other animals. And that's what I was talking about when they creep really low to the ground. And here's what I, I tell people, because I used to... And granted, I trained dogs for, you know, over 30 years for free. It's only the last, like, five or six years I've charged for it because it was kind of my effort to, same reason that we, we had the, the dog rescue where I would train the aggressive dogs, the dogs that, you know, were at the pound or headed to the pound to, because of aggressiveness and biting and things like that. Those are the dogs that I would work with and rehab. And then um, depending on their attention levels and whatnot, um, my son-in-law would train them for service dogs. And um, forget what I was talking about. Anyway, but yeah, I, I used to like tell people, people would call me and they'd be like, you know, Kelly, can you, 
help me because I offer this free service. I still offer this free service. And, um, you know, I want to get a dog. And I would always tell people, call me before you do because I'll, I'll sit down and I'll talk to you and we'll figure out what kind of, um, yeah, very loving, what kind of, um, thanks, Des, I'll see you in the other chat. What kind of um, lifestyle do you have? Where do you live? Do you have a fenced in yard? What what are your hobbies? Things like this. You know, do you have small kids? And, you know, I would tell them what breeds of dog that would be perfect for their lifestyle. In fact, my buddy in Australia, Paul Mercurio, he consulted me before he, he got his mom, his dog, her dog, um, as to what kind of dog to get for her. But, and then I would also go with people free of charge to pick their dog out so that I could give the dog a, uh, once over, you know, take a look at its gums and make sure it's healthy. Look at its eyes, look at its teeth, um, look for any, any, uh, signs of illness and things like that. But I would go with people when they pick out their dog and stuff to make sure they're getting a proper temperament dog and, and things like that. Um, and I just did that just to try and keep as many dogs out of the pound as I could, because so many times dogs end up at the pound for behavior problems and people are getting the wrong breed of dog because they're getting a dog whose natural instincts, what they were bred for does not fit their lifestyle. Like people with small children should not have border collies unless you are an experienced dog owner and can train that dog and be consistent with that dog because what happens is the, the border collies will, will round up the kids and they will be nippers. they will be ankle biters because they've got to have that job to do. That's why they're so good at agility because that is a job and a focus and, and they go through different obstacles and, and it, you know, it's a path to follow and a job to do. So that's why they're so good at agility. But, yeah, you have to be really careful with herding dogs. German Shepherds are herding dogs, too. You have to be very, very, and they're smart. You have to be very, very dominant with a German Shepherd. I, I used to have a German Shepherd, too. So it's Border Collie, Poodle, German Shepherd, Golden Retriever, Doberman Pinscher, Shetland Sheepdog, Labrador Retriever, Papillon, and then Bloodhound and Rottweiler. So almost like the, the good housekeeping list. You know a Rottweiler's got to be on there because that's how Caesar started his career. He had like 13 Rottweilers. Rottweilers are smart. And they're not as mean as people make them out to be. The only dog on this list that I say be cautious with is and it's not even the Doberman. Um, it's the, uh, Border Collie. That's the number one dog that I try and caution people on because they're so high energy. Border Collies, um, uh, blue tequilers, things of that nature, dogs of that nature, they were bred to do jobs and they're very high energy. And if a dog is bored, it's going to be destructive. So, you know, you got to be careful. Notre Dame, my father-in-law likes Notre Dame. <gasps> oh, Melissa, I'm so sorry. <clears throat> I'm so sorry. I hope that they caught the pit bulls and quarantined them. Did they catch them and, and quarantine them? And hold the owners responsible. Pits are not dangerous, Melissa. Pit bulls are not dangerous. Pit bulls are one of the most docile breed of dog that you could get. Now, my pit bull was an attack pit bull. And he was still, okay, he, he did shuts and he was a police dog. Um, trained to be a police dog. He was narcotics detection. He did shuts and work, which is the suit work. He did attack. He did seek and find or seek and rescue type things um, and drug detection. Did I say that already? I used to take him into people's houses and do sweeps 
you know, I, and I didn't charge very much. I would do $80 for a whole house or I would do $40 for one room. You know, people with drug problems and, and teenagers, parents wanted to know if their teens were doing drugs and things of that nature. I would take Monster into the house and do a sweep of the room and everything. So if, you know, to see if there were drugs in the room. And um, like I said, $40 for one room, 80 for a whole house. But um, even though he was trained to do all these vicious things on command, he was the most sweet docile, well-behaved, gentle dog that I've ever owned. Ever owned. Gentle, sweet with anybody. Anybody. Even somebody who was being mean. You know, if somebody was being mean to somebody else or somebody was spanking their kid, he would be concerned. You know, he would be like, you know, watching, but he would never growl. He would never nothing. He would be like, oh no, something bad is happening. But if you gave the, the correct command, that dog would snap to work. But it's, um, that's just uh, two dogs that were bored, not trained, mistreated, probably beaten, or were loose for a long period of time and that cat was food. You know, any dog will kill if it's hungry. You know, one of one of the breeds of dog that's most popular to bite, you wouldn't believe it. It's golden retriever. You always hear about the pit bulls, but goldens are known to bite a lot too. You know, it's don't blame the breed, blame the owner. And I used to rehab former fighting pit bulls. So and even these these former fighting pit bulls where their faces are scarred, their bodies are scarred, they are some of the most gentle, calm, easy rehabilitated dogs. The easiest dog to rehabilitate is a pit bull. And all you have to do is just show them the love. And then they're so immediately, so immediately trusting. You know what I mean? And even a former fighting dog can still be good with other dogs because they pick up on energy. I used to use Rocky, the one that was in bed with me, the one that's deaf now. He was my he was my partner because he can be around an aggressive dog and not be intimidated. You know, he can have a dog and get on top of him and he'll just lay there like this. What you going to do? You know, and then flip right back up and just go and sniff the dog. He was just so docile. I never had to worry about him having bad energy. And because you get two dogs together with bad energy, and there's going to be a fight. So I used to use Rocky a lot with my with my dog training, even those great big dogs. You know, the the pit bulls and everything. The only reason pit bulls can be so destructive is. Oh, I'm sorry, honey. That sucks. That's not right. Those pit bulls should have been quarantined and probably put down. You know what I mean? Because that's not right. That is not right. As big a dog advocate as I am, if your dog is a is a killer, if it's a livestock killer, or it's a it's a dog that roams and it's killing other animals, um, you know, yeah, you can try and rehab it and everything, but those situations when they've had to fight for food, they have to be in special homes, away from public, away from other animals. I'm so sorry that happened to you, sweetie. I'm so sorry that happened to you. That should never happen to you. Man. Look, I was jumped by a 120-pound bull mastiff with my one-and-a-half-year-old son right next to me. And I still have the scars. Here's one, and here's one. I don't know if you can see them. And this was 26 years ago. And those right there where my fingers are, on the outsides of my fingers, were his two front fangs. Right here and right here. Okay? And he shook me. But I knew enough to go with the shake. And I stayed calm, and I would just reached around, and I pinched his nose really, really hard. 
I pinched his nose really, really hard, and he let, he released me, and I grabbed my son and got out, and then the guy praised the dog, and the dog had bitten four previous people, and I went to court to try and have the dog taken away from the owner or put down, and I know that sounds bad for me because I had heard from mutual friends that it had bitten two children, and that's why I, I tried to have the dog put down, but the judge said no. Nope. Bye, Leticia. I'll see you over there. The judge said, nope, I can't. You know, the law indicates he, you know, he pretty much has to kill somebody for anything like that to, to happen. And about two weeks later, he bit a neighbor's kid and the neighbor's, the neighbor's father shot the dog and killed it. So, you know, nature took care of it, but it's not the dog's fault. When a dog attacks somebody, and the owner praises it, that's the owner. That was the owner's fault. That's not the dog. The dog is doing what it's being told is the good thing to do. So, yeah, it, Melissa, it you know, those dogs were hungry. Those dogs were hungry. That's why they attacked your cat. And unfortunately, they probably ripped your cat apart and, and were using it for food. And that is so tragic. I'm so sorry. Man, I want to cry for you. I'm keeping it together because I'm sick of crying on my damn channel. But, you know, I'm not saying that that was right. Those dogs needed to be, you know, quarantined and should have probably been put down. And, um... And I say that because it's probably the best thing for them because they don't know any different. You hear pit bulls ganging up on horses and cattle and livestock. Pit bulls that run loose. Pit bulls will, they'll come together because they naturally get along with other dogs. So you will see small groups of pit bulls that have met on the street because a pit bull is a very loving and nurturing dog and they like to be part of packs they like to be part of a family so you'll see dogs that didn't used to know each other or grow up together running as a pack and the bad thing about a pit is not their nature that they want to hurt it's their jaw strength and their neck muscles okay and their jowls are so strong that is where the damage and the danger comes from with a pit bull it's not their temperament and it's not their breed. It's that they have this strong jaw structure, okay? That's why when they open their mouth, they smile. Their jowls are way out here, but their teeth are only right here, okay? Their teeth are right here, but the jowls go out here because that's all, like here, jowls. It's all their muscles and their, their intense neck muscles. A lot of people think pit bulls can lock jaws. It's impossible for a dog to lock their jaws. It can't happen. It's impossible. But they have such muscular um, structure in them that they can just hold on to that rope and swing. And it's actually one of the best exercises for a pit bull. I know a lot of people don't like it, but a really good responsible pit owner will have one of those you know, those ropes, like they'll use a clothesline or a tree and they'll have those ropes with the great big springs on them and the, the toys hanging down so the pit bull can jump and, and thrust, thrust around like this, you know, and you see it and you think it's, it's, it's vicious and it's trying to tear that rope up or it's trying to tear that toy up. No, they're just playing. They're playing just like any dog would grab a toy and shake it. That's all they're doing. They're just hanging while they do it. And when they get their body swinging around like that, that's fun for them. It's like a playground, like a carousel. And it wears down their energy and it exercises their mind. And it's one of the best exercises that you can see. And whenever I see a video on YouTube or TikTok or Facebook where they show these pit bulls doing these exercises and doing these things, um, or where they'll have them jump up, you know, against a building to grab something. I praise those owners. I praise those owners for being good, responsible dog owners for their breed. You know, because that is one of the best things that you can do for a pit bull. Because you're exercising what 
God gave them. You're you're utilizing, you're allowing that breed of dog to utilize what their what they were bred to do. You know what I mean? So it's like a job for that dog. That's why it's so important to make sure that you get the correct dog for your lifestyle. And anytime you guys see, I, I'll get on my rant and I'll talk for hours about animals and animal advocacy and, and all of that. Because I am so knowledgeable on dogs and I've trained for so many decades. I was a vet tech. You know, I, I did rehab former fighting dogs. I did rehab, you know, uh, the vicious dogs, the dogs that would bite. Um, I've only been tagged by one dog in my whole life. And that was when I was a vet tech and the vet would not, the vet would not listen to me because every dog will give warning signs and he wouldn't listen to me. And I got in between him and the dog. It was a, it was a feral dog. It was a wild dog and it was a big German shepherd. It had, it was born in the wild. It had never been captured. A woman captured it. It was young and I got tagged right here. But that's because the stupid vet that I worked for would not listen. And I got, I took the hit so that the old, the old man vet wouldn't get, get it right there. Cause I knew if I got tagged, I would know how to handle it. I would know what to do. And I didn't think he would. So. Oh, Melissa, you're so welcome. Melissa says, thank you for discussing this with me. Now go have fun with Kimmy and Todd. I'm going to. You're the best, Kelly. Mom, I love you bunches. Oh, Melissa, I love you. And please, please know that my heart is with you during this time. Losing a pet under any circumstances is so tragic and so hard. But to lose a pet under under those circumstances, under tragic circumstances, especially when you're being responsible, that cat, your cat was in his own yard. Your cat was not doing anything wrong and he was violated. Your home was violated. I just can't imagine that. I'm so sorry that that happened to you. If you ever want to talk, you know how to reach me, honey. If you ever want to talk about it, I am here for you. And that goes for all of you guys. If you have questions on dogs or breeds or anything like that, please reach out to me. Because chances are, I know the history of the breed. And I can tell you, um, you know, what they were bred for and what their characteristics are. And um, I've probably trained over 40 different breeds of dog. So I've been doing it for so long. Um, but the last dog I trained was a one year old, 120 pound German shepherd. And it was when we were here at this house about two years ago, two and a half years ago. And he was not leash trained. And with, you know, I'm a strong girl. I lift weights and, and I work out and things and I'm very strong or I couldn't carry this frame with the ailments that I have. But that dog took me down. Um, he took off and boom, took pulled me, pulled me, just just pulled me. And um, my husband said, "That's it, that's enough. You're not doing it anymore. No more training dogs." So I said, "Okay," because I like to work with the big dogs because they're the ones that always end up at the pound. I I've trained little dogs too, Chihuahuas hate working with chihuahuas they are the meanest damn dog but i've only met one nice chihuahua and those little suckers go for your face um so i don't train anymore but not that i wouldn't if somebody needed me but anyway i'm gonna go check out kimmy and taddy and um i will talk to you guys later and i know where my dollar bill is it's right here all right, guys, hit me up if you need me, and I'll see you over at Borderline Hoarder-ish's channel.
for her and Kimmy, or her and, and Toddy. So I'll see you over there, guys. Mwah! Mwah! Love you. Bye. Boy, I get